Make sure that we are recording. Um, so we can make sure that we have the recording back. But yeah, so you're going to need your chart. In your chart, the placements that we're going to be dealing with is your cardinal placements as well as your fixed placements. So your cardinal placements are Aries, Libra, Cancer, and Capricorn, okay? So if you got your chart out, go ahead and make notes, circle those places because the eclipse of today is dealing with all of those placements, not just your planets, but also your houses as well, okay? So again, Aries, Libra, that's the relationship axis, Cancer, Capricorn, that's your money placements, okay? You know, not the money placements, also your nurturing placements. So money and nurturing and the relationship energy, okay? And then the eclipse that we're having on the fifth is your fixed placements. Fixed placements are your uh, Aquarius, your Leo, your Taurus, and your Scorpio, okay? So if you can see what we're dealing with, how we are bringing all this energy together, this is going to be the themes for this year. So meaning every eclipse that we're gonna have this year is gonna be dealing with those elements, those cardinal elements and those fixed elements, okay? So first things first, let me share my screen. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. So first things first. You, you, I'm real quick. I'm sorry. Capricorn is money and nurturing. Yes. The money is Capricorn. Okay. So wherever you got Capricorn, that's your money. That's your big boss energy. Okay. That's the 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 person who's running things. It's all Capricorn, or what we like to say is Capricorn rules the accounting. Why you think we filed our taxes starting in January? Because it's Capricorn. Capricorn wants to count count that thing out. Need to know where the money is going, how it's being used, how it's being, you know what I'm saying, ciphering in. That's all Capricorn dynamics. And Cancer is the polar opposite to Capricorn, meaning it is the one that spends all the money. So wherever your, Capricorn, your Cancer placements are is where you're supposed to first nurture yourself. And then the second uh, spaces of it is that it draws the money, meaning that cancers may not never have a billion dollars in their account, but they don't need to. Because if they got Capricorns around or if they got the right people around, they're going to always have access to the money. OK, so wherever you got cancer in your chart, this is where you can have multiple businesses going on. You can do multiple things with that cancer dynamic. Wherever you got uh, Capricorn, you can also have multiple businesses doing multiple streams of income, always accounting. It is the discipline. It is the structure. Okay. All right. You. You're welcome. So, of course, today is the new moon. It's a new moon in Aries along with the eclipse. Now, what's special about this eclipse is that it's something that's called a hybrid eclipse. Have y'all ever heard of that? Have y'all ever heard the term hybrid eclipse? I'm sure you haven't. So let's talk about it, okay? So hybrid eclipses are something that are very rare. So meaning in this century, we've only had seven of them. <laughs> and it ain't too many more we gonna have, okay? But the hybrid eclipse is everything to do with the solar eclipse that changes its appearance as the moon's shadow moves across the Earth's surface. So the ways in which it eclipses, it looks like it's a total eclipse, but it's not, it's not really what's happening. So the ways in which hybrid eclipses actually show up, this is a little picture of it, um, just showing how it actually foreshadows the energy. So y'all know everything is energy. So when things move a little bit different or rare, then we also have to account that this is a rare occurrence that we're dealing with, okay? So a hybrid eclipse is a type of solar eclipse that looks like an annular solar eclipse or a total solar eclipse, depending on the, the position of how you're looking at it, okay? So during a hybrid solar eclipse, the Earth's curvature brings some sections of the eclipse path into the moon's umbra, the darkest part of the shadow that creates total solar eclipses, while the other areas remain outside the umbra's region causing an annular eclipse so this is a very strong one now is it strong it's important it's rare okay so first of all you should give yourself a pat on the back for just being here <laughs> being here in this energy and absorbing the energy okay because it's a lot going on it can also be very depressing energy too meaning that if you're not aware of the cycles that's going on within astrology 
a lot of stuff can make you feel like like you're crazy a little bit. Like, what am I dealing with? What's happening? And it's really just a lot of pressure. And the pressure comes from you realizing the power that's coming from this and then what to do with it. And sometimes that power can feel like you are, like, again, you're all over the place, okay? So know that today's energy is a hybrid eclipse and we're not gonna have this for a, a, a lot of years, okay? I think it's like one or two other ones that we're gonna have in this century and then that's it. Okay, so very, very important time. If we're looking at the chart of it, right, of today's energy, let's pull that up. This is what it looks like. Okay, so y'all know the astrology is literally a wheel. It's a 360 degree bubble that allows us to be able to see everything that's inside of it. Okay, so when we look at today's uh, points, we'll see that not only is the sun, okay, let me let Kadeshi in. Not only is the sun in Aries, we got the moon that's in Aries, and it's exactly the same degree. It's 29 degrees, okay? Say again, Pearl. Oh, that was, was that you? Who said something? Who coming in? Who said something? Kadesh? Yes. How are you? I'm wonderful. <laughs> are, you, are you high? Are you 420 in over there? I, I Not like I need to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay the night is still young okay. yes <laughs> so not only are we looking at the fact that we have the sun and the moon again at the exact degree but look at the other placements that's going on within aries so jupiter's in aries and chiron is in aries our favorites okay so chiron is the part that i'm saying that can kind of make you feel a slightly depressed or, or slightly feel like it's a lot going on and it is a lot going on, but what's going on is healing. Okay. This is a, it's a really high point of healing. Well, healing what? Well, we're talking about the fact that this eclipse is ushering in the dynamics of changing our axis from the Taurus Scorpio axis into the dynamics of Aries and Tar or Aries and Libra. Then we're talking about relationship axis. So we are in a point of healing our relationship dynamics. Okay. So meaning during today's energy, you can feel multitude of ways. You can feel like you're processing old relationships. You can also feel like you're processing the relationship you're in now and feel Feeling like you need to, you know, get get more free or do more for yourself, or you feel like you you haven't been doing enough inside the relationship. There's a lot of stuff going on as it relates to the relationship dynamics. I urge you and encourage you today and tomorrow to sit with yourself and process those relationships, and not from the negative perspective. Okay, it's easy for us to fall into victim mode whenever we're talking about relationships. I don't want you to do that. What I want you to do with this energy and this relationship eclipse energy is for you to think about the, the, the good things that have come out of these relationships. Meaning like, even if it was something that taught you to have better boundaries, okay? That's still a good thing, okay? Even though it may have caused you some heartache and some pain and all this kind of stuff, realize that the relationship that you are currently in or the relationship that you found yourself in over the last course or maybe like the last three to four years, right? All of these relationships have been teaching you something very important about yourself and that is the balance of who you are or what we like to say Aries is the balance of the I am and Libra is the balance of we okay it's talking about how we then take those things that are very important to us and how we share it with others okay so when you're thinking about today's energy and thinking about the axis of this relationship dynamic and the eclipse energy think about that think about the great things that have come out of the relationships that you've had and not just your sexual relationships okay also your partnerships your real close friendships okay people who have been holding you accountable to your life and living your life on purpose right all of these relationships we want to process and calculate so now that we're talking about this dynamic, right? I want you guys to, in the chat, let me know where your Aries is in your chart. Where do you have Aries? Please tell me, tell me where you got Aries. I have Sun in Aries. I have Mercury in Aries as well. Okay, so where is your Aries? I only have Aries in the 11th house. Okay, good. All right, come on, come on. Aries in the fort, okay? So that's around family and mothering relationships, all right? Aries in the seventh, so that's the relationship house itself, okay? So a balance of I versus we. Aries rising, okay, then. 
how you look. We're talking about what you look like. So even though you was a Sagittarius, you look like an Aries, okay? So your head appearance. Also making sure, have you been experiencing any headaches over the last 24, 48 hours, Leslie? Mm-hmm. I bet you have. <laughs> If you find yourself having any type of head is issues, okay, uh, Pearl, you've been having some headaches too? Definitely um, yesterday. Okay. So mm -hmm. headaches, because Aries rules the head, right? And Kadesh, I'm going to come back to you in a second. Because Aries rule the head, any headaches is that you have been ignoring your Aries placements, okay? So your Aries placements need your attention. Pearl, for yours, you say it's in the 11th house. When the last time you've been out with friends? You work <laughs> so much. But when have you gotten out and just really had some fun with your friends? It's been a long time. Okay, come on. <laughs> let's, let's get out. You know, you still got, you still got tonight and tomorrow. But get okay. out, call, call a girlfriend that you ain't spent some time with and be like, hey, let's go just get out for a second and have, you know, a little bite to eat and have a drink, okay? Get out. I'm going to do that for mm -hmm. sure. Leslie, you know what that means, right? What does it mean for you to have that Aries rising? What what have you not been doing that you're getting a headache about? Pioneering, girl. You need to pioneer. What are, what are you, this business, this work that you are resisting doing, it's time to go. You are moving too slow, okay? Aries is like, what is what is the holdup over here? What is we having this problem with? Can you please speed us up, okay? Time for you to really get out and really do some things. I need to see you do more in social media in the next couple of days, okay? Post some things, talk about some things. You don't even have to post anything about the business or the brand, but you do need to talk to us. Let us see you, you know what I'm saying? Let us see the things that you are pioneering and working on. Don't be afraid to show yourself, okay? Cadet says she has Aries in, oh my God, my text move. She have Aries in Mars and in Saturn. Okay, then, and it's in the first house. In the first house? Your Saturn is in the first house? Are you Aries? You Aries rising? You not Aries rising, are you? No, I just, I don't have any Aries placements. I just have Mars and Saturn in the first house. <laughs> oh, got you. Okay, cool. I'm sorry. I'm just like, wait a minute. You're not an Aries. Positive, baby. <laughs> no, I don't have Aries <laughs> nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Okay. So, but what is your rising sign? Virgo. Virgo rising. So the Virgo rising, that means you have Pisces in the seventh. So that means you got Aries in the eighth. Okay, still good. Okay, so Mars and Saturn in the first house. We already know it's time to go. It's our, our, you know, time to structure some things, put some things into place. And because Aries sits in that A house, it's also about you letting some things go. You know what I'm saying? Maybe moving some things around. Maybe some old stagnant energy has been showing up. You know what I'm saying? So what do you need to release during this time period? You know, this eclipse is showing up, especially surrounding relationship energy. Because even though it's in the eighth house, eighth house is sex magic. When the last time you had some good old sex magic? <laughs> I know you probably said yesterday. Okay. Right, like this weekend. <laughs> okay, let's move that thing. Let's really, you know, have some more. Have some more tonight. Well, today I had a session, uh, a tantra session, and um, <laughs> there was a lot of things in my ovaries that I'm struggling to release okay. so that was something that came up for me today and we had to light some fire so oh, that I could yeah. move through that so that's really good yeah that's all eighth house womb stuff you know what I'm saying hidden secrets things that you probably just been you know thinking in your head I'll get over it and move past it and it's just sitting there so that's good that the tantra session came up because anything that show up today meaning whatever you guys have been talking about conversations people that you may have met whatever energy is showing up today is here to help you to move through it and that's why again I brought up the fact that Chiron is so prominent in this eclipse as well because it is healing so whatever's been showing up know that it, it is coming to give you the energy that you need to heal okay all right taju says mercury and aries communication um venus and aries okay this spontaneity ready to jump on something you ready to pounce <laughs> you ready to pounce on a few a few ladies you got you got your um your list together taju you ready 
you know, as well as Chiron and Aries. So this is also healing surrounding those aspects as well. So I mean, like healing in your communication of your ability to move forward and pioneer things in your life and also healing surrounding the ways in which you have loved. Venus is our love language, okay? So your love language of sometimes moving really fast or jumping into things may sometimes not have rendered you the result that you wanted. So this eclipse is going to help you to slow down and also help you to heal some things so that when you decide to pounce, okay, which is going to be in a minute, at least you know that you've allowed yourself to see all the details you need to see before you make those decisions, okay? Aries in the fifth house, okay then, Candace, it's time to get on the stage, baby. It's time to show us what you got, okay? No more hiding what you got, you know what I'm saying? Show us in a bold way. <laughs> Don't know me, lady. It's time to get out there and do it, okay? No more hiding. Let this Aries energy pioneer. Let this Aries be an example for all of us. What I love about Aries is because it's the baby, right? And if you if you just spend some time, like I do on my social media, I have a lot of uh, little kids that I follow who are, I feel like are very advanced. Um, there's one that I've been following uh, recently. His name is Samaj. And Samaj is like two or three or whatever. But Samaj is like an old man. He's a Pisces, okay? And Samaj is the one that said, Mama, you just so brutal all week. All week, you just been so brutal. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I love Samaj, okay? But what I want to bring up about that is because children and Aries are the same. I Meaning Aries is the representation of the, of the babies of the Zodiac. And if you just notice how children move they don't need permission okay they know what they know they want what they want and they go after it okay so we have to take that energy on especially when it comes down to how we're going to allow ourselves to heal and change in this dynamic you just gotta know it okay and just move don't be so scared or don't be so afraid to really uh take risk Aries is also a risky space because it has vision okay so today energy is also about where is your vision and what is your vision concerning? So all the places where you have Aries, your vision is starting to get stronger, okay? Meaning that it's time for you to actually use these things and come out. And at the at the end of it, if you just say, I don't know what to do, I'm just confused, just play, just have fun. You know what I'm saying? Whatever aspect you have, whatever Aries is showing up for you, especially whatever you got in the first house too, it's time for you to just play, okay? Get yourself out there, have fun, don't be afraid to, again, take risks, be bold, understand that this is the energy that Aries is ushering you in this eclipse energy, okay? And again, eclipses are six months long. So this is not just today. Understand that what you're dealing with now, the end of this or the shot, the other part of it is going to show up in October, okay? So you got from now until October to work these aspects, okay? Now, again, we're going to be dealing with the axis of Aries and Libra for the next two and a half years years so you're going to constantly get the work when it comes down to Aries and Libra so if you think it's just today <laughs> that you have to deal with or you don't want to deal with it no ma'am no sir you're going to be dealing with this for a minute okay but the highlights of it the highlights of this energy today is going to carry you six months until October all right so let's see so sun moon and Jupiter. So let's talk about Jupiter a little bit. Okay. So Jupiter is in Aries right now and will be in Aries until I think May 16th. And um, then May 16th is going to move into Taurus. So if you've been in class with me, you know, I say, if you want to know where the bag is, follow Jupiter, right? So meaning Jupiter's in Aries and wherever your Aries placement is, that's where Jupiter is also having a conversation with you. Okay. So the things that we're talking about today where your Aries things lie is also where your money lies as well, meaning that you can get blessings surrounding that area because Jupiter only wants to bless you. Jupiter only wants you to be bigger and wants you to go bigger than you've ever been going in the last couple of years. So because it's coming in with the Aries dynamic and the eclipse, it's showing you why you have been afraid or what you have been stagnant to do when it comes down to that. But it's also showing you where it's going to give you more energy and give you more. So whatever your Aries placements are, whatever you have in the your houses as well, this is where the blessings are going to come. So again, your conversations today and tomorrow and the next couple of days are very important to how how Jupiter is also working with you, okay? Now, again, Jupiter is going to switch into Taurus on the 16th. So from now until the 16th, you got some energy to work with. If you want to just pull in more money, 
follow your Jupiter, uh, follow your Aries placements and uh, also have the conversation with the universe. Like, hey, I need this Jupiter blessing. What do I need to do? What do I need to move on? What do I need to get out of my own way and take a little risk of surrounding? And I promise you the answer is going to show up because Aries is also very intuitive. Again, those children, the reason why they're able to say and do what they need to say and do is because they are still very much tied to the other world or the or the ethers. They're not all the way here. So again, where you have your Aries energy is where you're not all the way here. You're very intuitive. And you're very almost psychic. So use your psychic energy and your psychic ability to channel this stuff through. And I promise you again, whatever it is that you're needing to render to yourself as it relates to getting some movement, this is how you're going to make that change. Okay. All right. So let's talk a little bit also about... Hold on. Okay, so if you want to know the eclipses that are coming up, right? So May 5th is going to be the lunar eclipse in Scorpio. The eclipse that's the back energy to this April 20th energy is October 14th. So that's going to be that solar eclipse in Libra. Again, we're talking about the axis of Aries and Libra, okay? Meaning that they always work, always work hand in hand. There's never a time when we're not talking about Aries that we're not talking about uh, Libra as well, okay? So even though today's energy eclipse is about the solar eclipse dealing with Aries, Libra is still there. So again, that's where this relationship axis come in. So know that whatever we're dealing with relationship wise will make its full presence with you and within you by October 14th. Okay. That's going to be another portal of opportunity. So of course we'll have a class then talking about that um, eclipse, but I just want you guys to be prepared. I Meaning like work on it now. You don't have to wait until the actual time to pull those things through. You can already start working on it now. What Gigi, how do I work on it? Where is your Libra placements? Put those in the chat. What do you have in Libra? Where is your Libra? Most of y'all are probably going to say Pluto because it's a big group of us that have Pluto and Libra. Yep, see? Knew it. We are the Pluto and Libra generation. <laughs> what else you got? Pluto and Libra. Okay, Venus in the fifth house. Come on now, Pearl. So you know this is this is definitely a relationship axis for you. You know what I'm saying? And also opening you up to, to have a partnership that can support you in the in the light. And what I mean, the light meaning on the stage, somebody who can come and help you out with visuals and help you out with just any type of work that you need as it relates to the business and being more so out there. Yes, that relationship is going to strengthen that. Um, it, Jupiter, say again. It is happening. <laughs> it is happening. I love it. But I've known the person since, like, when I was, like, 18 years old. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you, you know, when that person knows you, yep, who you are, not where you are now, mm -hmm. that's all I'm saying. Exactly. And it's a time period now for it, right? Like, you had to go through a lot of steps. And that's what we have to realize, too. Sometimes we want things, but we haven't gone through a lot of the change and transformations that we need in order to usher those things in. And you've been going through a lot of changes. From, girl, from when I first <laughs> met you until now? Girl. Do you hear me? Multiple bodies, multiple spirits, multiple everything. Multiple spaces. Yeah, shifts. That's the word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So now you're ready to usher that in, you know what I'm saying? Because even though they've been there to help you, you haven't been open to receive it, you know what I'm saying? So now you're open to receive it. Jupiter and Saturn, come on, Leslie, it's time to go, baby. Can we Can we go big? But you know, you see, you see what's after that Jupiter? You see that Saturn placement? You know what that means? Huh? That discipline, where you at? I got to see your face. Okay, because I, I, I couldn't see your face. That, that Saturn thing? That discipline thing, ma'am, okay? That's it right there. If we can get disciplined, Jupiter ain't gonna have no problem giving you everything. But you gotta stop giving your energy away to people who ain't gonna do shit with it. Do you hear me? They don't care about that. They're doing the same thing you're doing, which is avoiding self. And of course, they'll accept it, but they ain't gonna do nothing with it. You know how I know that? Because you ain't doing shit with it. So it's the exact same vibration and mirror reflection. So discipline first, structure first, 
And then Jupiter is going to come in and give you all the rest of it. Okay. No separation in it. Sherry, moon and Pluto. Okay. Moon, Pluto, little and first house. Girl, when I tell you every time I ask you what stuff is, especially that Virgo and that Libra, that Virgo and that Libra share, be, you have so much of it. I'd be like, Lord Jesus. Okay. Moon, Pluto, the change. Of course, like I said, most of us are the Pluto and Libra children. Okay. So of course, all of us got that. Lilith is your wild woman, first house, okay? So know that the eclipse energy that we're dealing with now, this is going to usher you into a huge change. I know you and I also have been working on relationship dynamics. This is it. This is the year, baby. This is the year to open all that up. But you see what you wrote first? Moon, emotions. We got to get into the seat of those emotions. So go ahead and start working on these things now. That's why I'm asking y'all to pull it up. So you already know, because remember we're talking about cardinal placements. So this is the cardinal energy. Now y'all know why this is happening. It's not just old coincidence. No, this is the axis that's giving you some forward movement as it relates to relationships and partnerships, okay? Some of us need partnerships. Some of us are in relationships, but we still desire partnerships for certain different things. So this is how that's going. the axis is going to usher those things in, okay? Taju Pluto, okay? That's why I said most of us are the Pluto and Libra children, which means we are the children that came here to help work out the dynamics of relationships. Most of us came from relationships. Let me just say it. Most of us came from parents who did not have great relationships. So we took the oath and we signed the contract to come into this life and this existence to straighten that out so that our children won't have to suffer in those same ways, okay? So even though we didn't have parents that had great communication skills, they act like they hate each other, each other most of the time, okay? It's like, it's like they got a love-hate relationship. They hate each other so much, but then they don't want to leave, okay? It's all this back and forth stuff that's been going on within our parents and our parents' uh, relationships and their marriages. So we came here to change that. So wherever you have, you got Pluto and Libra, then welcome, okay? We have a lot of work to do surrounding relationships, but I promise you, if you do your healing work, that by the time we get to the end of this, we will have healthy, thriving relationships that's going to teach our children how to be better. It's gonna teach our children how to be more open as well when it comes down to how we balance out that energy, okay? Jupiter, Saturn, Jupiter, Saturn, and Libra in the seven. All of that in the seven house. So you already know, you already know what that is, okay? The relationship stuff. Again, that's that crutch stuff I've been telling you and Marcel about. Like, Marcel, don't let her, don't give up. Don't don't let up off of her, okay? Hammer it in when it comes down to that because the relationship is what's gonna hold her accountable to getting this stuff done. If you were disciplined and structured, she has no other choice. She can be mad and irritated with you about it, but she still got to do it because she ain't going to let you leave her. You know what I'm saying? And because she ain't going to let you leave her, then that's the, that's the key. That's the secret weapon right there is be like, listen, if you don't do this, then I'm going to leave you. And she ain't going to like that. She ain't going to let you leave her. So understand that her relationship is what's going to hold her accountable to her Jupiter and her Saturn dynamic. And that's why I'm telling her structure. You are a part of her structure. You're a part of the energy that can help her to stay structured. But that also means that you got more weight on you to make sure that you get it done. You know what I'm saying? Don't let her pull you out of structure. Because if you pull her out of structure, then guess what? Neither one of y'all going to get it done. All right, Candace, Libra Sun, mm -hmm. Libra Uranus. Come on, come on up out of there. Libra Pluto. And you know me, you already talked about this, what that Libra Pluto means. You also is here to help change some of this relationship dynamics. And the fact that Libra is in the 11th house, that's again, that's your house of friendship. So being very balanced, being the diplomatic person in the relationship energy, right? When it comes down to your friends, but also being in that vibration of understanding that that Libra son, you are also here to help change the dynamics of relationships, not just in your son perspective, but also thinking out outside of the box right non-conventional relationships non-traditional stuff all of that stuff is all through your Libra placements and the fact that you've been a Libra son meaning that you came here with a lot of heavy things to change okay meaning that you already see what needs to be done and you signed up for it okay 
I know you feel it, Sherry. I, I be feeling it too. Libra in the second house. Okay, so the balance of the energy of relationships can definitely affect your money. Okay, so meaning that a great relationship that you are allowing yourself to have patience for and allowing yourself to not just jump into, you can have a good balance. It can bring more money into your vibration. But if you just continue to jump in relationships, guess what it's going to do? It's going to cost you, sir. It's going to cost you more than it is of fun. It looks like fun at the beginning until it starts to cost you a whole lot on the back end, okay? So know that the quality of relationships, the quality of unions that you have can make or break your pockets, all right? All right, good. So y'all know that's the energy. So we know what we're doing with Aries. We know what we're doing with Libra, right? So now let's segue into the May fit. Well, any questions about that? Any questions about the, the dynamic of the eclipse energy with the Aries vibration, the new moon, or the October 14th eclipse in Libra? Any questions? Go on once. Going twice. No, can you tell me about my Mars and Libra? I can. So Mars and Libra is the, we are, already know that Mars is the movement, okay? And anytime we're talking, dealing with Mars and Libra, first of all, Mars don't necessarily like dealing with Libra. <laughs> the reason why Mars don't like dealing with Libra. <laughs> Mars be like, I'm ready to go. You like, okay, I want to go too, but hold on a minute. Let me think about it a little bit more. And it's like, okay, we ain't got time to think about it. Okay, I'm ready. But what if this happened? So it's a lot of back and forth energy sometimes in, in the ways in which you can assert yourself. I want to move forward. You know what I'm saying? You say that it, it was in your first, where, what did you say it was in? What house? First house. In the first house. So sometimes it can, it can affect your ability of how you show up. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's why having Aries around you, AKA me and other fire signs around you that push you, even though you can feel like you need to wait a halt a little bit, is going to be very beneficial for you. So increasing your fire sign energy, increasing that energy within yourself, using that Aries dynamic to kind of segue into that Mars, especially because Mars don't necessarily like dealing with Libra. So it can cause you to have a Lot of back and forth in the ways in which you can move but you also said you got mars and what are the, the other placement along with that you said saturn in, yes saturn so this well no no that's just in the but those are just in the second house so yeah they both in, i mean in the first house in the first house you said saturn is there with it though right saturn yeah, and mars saturn together and mars. Yep. so discipline so as long as you got the discipline and things in place make sure that you have a list things listed out that you need to do if you got things listed out it'll stop that libra from trying to like jump in to cause this back and forth energy meaning if you know what to do and you are solid on what has to be done you'll get it done but you can't win it okay no winging it for you because if you try to wing anything it's gonna it's gonna cause a lot of stall meaning that you're not gonna get as much done if you just try to wing it okay so discipline is very important when it comes down to especially if you're doing something that you want to see an immediate result off of now if it's something that you're testing out you're just like, I want to see how this is. Then you can definitely wing it. It'll be okay. But if it's something that you automatically need to happen, you need some finances to come in, you need uh, the you know the business to grow, you need the relationship to grow, anything that you are in need of must have a structured perspective of it first so that that Mars and Libra energy don't come in and keep knocking you back and forth, like putting you into a space where it's all air. So be mm -hmm. disciplined and that'll satisfy it. Okay? Okay. All right. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. All right. All right. I'm nice. Okay. Okay. So the May 5th energy. So this energy is going to then pull its way all the way into next month. Okay. So we're starting off with Aries and Libra. We're starting off with this healing conversation of how can we heal our relationships? How can we heal the vibration that we're dealing with? Understand too, that a lot of the stuff that we have had to deal with in the dynamic of the cycles of Aries and Libra has a lot to do with your root. What I mean, root, I'm talking about the, the people that you came from, your mama, your daddy, your grandmama, your granddaddy, okay? So you're not only just doing this work for you, you're also healing generations in the past and you're also healing generations in the future, okay? So these things are really important for you to process and continue to process as you work through your Aries and Libra's vibration, right? But as we move and segue 
into May 5th energy, what's going to then start to come in is this conversation that we've been having for the last two and a half years, which is all about your value system and all about your boundaries. So what I mean is in order for you to have more and get more, in order for that to be the case, you have to have strong boundaries, okay? You have to know when to say no and when to say yes and not to be in fear of thinking that if you do uphold these good boundaries that some of your relationships are not going to last. If they do not last, then guess what? It was time for them to go anyway, okay? So we gotta stop being afraid to speak our truth, again, Taurus vibration, be afraid to speak what needs to be you know, spoken when it comes down to these energies that we're dealing with because at the end of it, the detriment that we're dealing with is us not having the things that we want to have. And the Scorpio energy, the May 5th lunar eclipse is going to put in your face. Like this is why you don't have what you need to have. The reason why is because you are scared, number one, and because you are scared, you're not saying and doing the things that you need to do. You are afraid to give up these things that you say that you want to give up for a new slate, okay? So meaning a lot of the dark sides of you are going to also reveal themselves between now and May 5th. Your job is not to try to avoid or act like it's not there. Your job is to say, oh, this is what I have been holding on to. This has have been part of my fears, okay? Especially surrounding relationship energy, but not just relationship energy, also surrounding sex, okay? Why did I say sex? Scorpio rules sex energy. Scorpio rules sex organs, okay? It also rules the, the hidden things, right? The hidden secrets, and some of the things that you may not have been uh, afraid to tell the truth about, okay? So a lot of us have dealt with some sexual things in our childhood, right? And those, not that those sexual things are something that has been stopping you, but internally they have because you've been blaming yourself or feeling like you caused it in some kind of way. No, that's not the truth. The truth is, this is some energy and some markers that we have been carrying through the bloodline. Remember, I just said a lot of this relationship markers and energy has been coming from the root cause. Well, this is part of it, too. OK, so understand that some of the stuff that we're dealing with that's going to show itself between now and May 5th is a part of the energy that has been getting in the way from you having healthier relationships healthier unions and also healthier sex okay now we might be having sex but is it completely healthy are you getting everything that you need out of this situation and if you're not getting everything that you need then what's getting in the way and what's getting in the way is a lot of buried energy that you just telling yourself that you're going to get over you're not going to get over it until you tell the truth okay the truth to yourself so journaling or writing about it or not being afraid to, you know what I'm saying? Depending on what type of social platform you have, um, you may or may not want to share this. You could maybe just share it within a friend group, right? But it's going to be very important for you to get it out of your mouth, meaning to say it and speak it out. Why am I saying to say it and speak it out? Because again, Scorpio and Taurus work together. So in order for Scorpio to get its clearing, it uses Taurus to get it out. So that means the throat chakra. So some of this stuff and this healing that you're going to need to, you know, come out of the darkness is going to be you not being afraid to say it. Again, there are no victims here. We're not talking about victimization. I'm talking about your power. Scorpio is the ruler of our power. So if we want more power, we got to be willing to let out the things that we have always been telling ourselves as a victim story. It's not the truth, right? The truth is I am one part of my bloodline. And the part of my bloodline that's here to change a lot of things. And with that comes a lot of responsibility. And that responsibility is me doing stuff that I'm doing now, which is having classes, talking about my stuff so that y'all can have safe space to talk about your things as well. We are all a part of this conglomerate together to heal, right? So the energy that we're going to be dealing with this lunar eclipse, which is all moon stuff. When you hear lunar, know that we're talking about moon. When you hear solar, know that we're talking about the sun. Okay, so this lunar eclipse is the emotions that have been getting in the way for you to advance in, in all ways as it relates to money, sex, you know, the value system, your boundaries, things that you're supposed to have, you know what I'm saying, and relationships, okay? So now, tell me where your Scorpio energy is. What do you have, Scorpio? Where is Scorpio?
Yeah, I know I got Scorpio in the fourth, and I got Uranus in Scorpio. All right, where's y'all Scorp? All right, Pluto and Scorpio. Okay. Uranus in the second house. All right, Pluto and Scorpio, meaning that it's here to help you to change. Pluto is the rule of Scorpio, so that's a good placement to have, right? It's just ensuring that whatever changes that you have, they're going to come swift. So I tell people that have Pluto and Scorpio is understand and be mindful that when you are resistant to your change, it will come. It's like quick karma. You know what I'm saying? So having Pluto and Scorpio means whenever you get the indication to change, get on it. Do it quick, okay? Because not doing it quick would allow you to have to go through a lot of things that you might not necessarily want to go through because Pluto and Scorpio ain't playing with you, okay? All right, let's see. Uranus in the second house. So you got Scorpio and Uranus. So that means, you know, your fears, like a lot of things that you need to change or... or have been wanting to change sometimes you get scared about coming out but understand that when you are scared the fact that it's in your second house you know when they say scared money don't make no money that's your thing right there the more you are scared about breaking out and breaking free it affects your money so you got to be willing to not only break out but also be willing to take risk okay all right Taju same for you and Leslie well, let me see all of my Uranus and Scorpio people so Sherry Leslie and Taju. So all of y'all got Uranus and Scorpio. So the Uranus and Scorpio people, you got to be, you know, come, you got to take the risk. You got to come out of the box. You can't be afraid because if you are afraid, again, it starts to mess up other areas. Again, Scorpio is one of those placements where it's either you are powerful and confident or you are fearful and scared. Okay. Okay, Pearl, I'll come back to that in just a minute um let's see Leslie you said okay and again so I told you Sherry yours is about you being afraid to break free and not come up out of that box affects your money second house is the house of money and stability and values so meaning that whatever you are not allowing yourself to come out and be free because Uranus is one it, it's, it's like the rebellious part but it's also the part that understands that it has a purpose it is the future so sometimes you're doing things that has not been seen before and that's what I'm saying about taking the risk you taking risk is going to provide a, a huge boost to that second house and have a boost of your money and your foundation Leslie for you having Uranus and Scorpio and it's in the eighth house this is all about that sex magic stuff so I see why more so you and King Thug and you with us because that allows you to do some risky stuff wait let me see your face again I have to because you know you be making all kind of facial expressions <laughs> Okay, so the kink up for you, this is the place where you feel, you know, like you are willing to take some risk or do some risky things, you know what I'm saying? But having that Scorpio in the eighth house is sex magic and sometimes being willing to go and do things that you may not have never done before or things that you have thought about, but especially when it comes down to your sexual energy, you, you, can't, you can't be scared, you know what I'm saying? And not that you are, but I'm just saying some of the things that you need to do and break out, break free from, you need to do that. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to talk about how this is going to affect your social presence in a minute, because again, I see some other stuff that I ain't never saw before today. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to need to see some ass. I'm going to need to see some shit that really don't you know, come up out of you. Okay. Cause you hiding too much. It's too much stuff. You are over there in fear and hiding of. Okay. Marcel said Scorpio sun, Uranus and Scorpio. So you heard me when I said about, about Uranus and Scorpio, correct? All right. Sun and Scorpio, you already know how that process. And in the 11th house, especially around your friends and in your, your social groups, right? You have to be willing to have certain conversations and push the button sometimes with people, right? Uh, make them talk about different things that make us feel open and exposed. And you already know you're great at that. You're great at the Scorpio exposure anyway, but now all, you know, also being willing to expose yourself and, and free yourself, not be so closed mouth sometimes and just being a good listener because you're a good listener but now we need to hear you talk about some things what are some ways in which you've taken some risk okay especially in your friend groups all right so i told you taught you of yours uranus okay mercury and scorpio in the 12th house communication right so 12th house is that one of the house that we have a problem um 
letting go of things you know what i'm saying so it's like one of our karmic houses so sometimes your communication can be of that of fear or talking as if you're afraid of something or like oh what if this happened you know so you just gotta be really mindful because mercury and scorpio people y'all tongues are very powerful you know what i'm saying when i mean the words that you say baby it's like instantaneous and it's like manifesting very quick you got to be mindful of that. So be mindful of the things that you sometimes allow yourself to say when you know that you're not sure. If you're not sure, just don't say it. Because if you say something in a in a negative connotation or in a fearful connotation, then that 12th house is going to be like, oh, she wants to experience this. I need to let her experience this so she can get rid of that. You know what I'm saying? So be mindful of how you speak when it comes down to that. Yes, ma'am. I remember us having this conversation in your session. You got to be mindful of your words. You know what I'm saying? Watch them. Watch what what you say and how you say it if you are feeling fear you have to interject the power so whatever the fear is surrounding say i am powerful and i can do this or i'm powerful and i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna make this happen because the scorpio dynamic no matter where it shows up it's going to make it happen it wants what it wants and it's going to go after whatever it needs it's going to do that but if you find yourself speaking against yourself in fear then because it's in the 12th house it will happen to give you that experience okay um scorpio and mars and, and jupiter okay so scorpio and mars energy mars like scorpio okay mars like aries and it likes scorpio why because those are two placements like i just said scorpio wants what it wants okay so it's going to go after whatever it is meaning like whatever scorpio is in your chart no matter how it positions itself it's going to go after it you know what i'm saying even if it means Sometimes killing itself because <laughs> it ain't, you know, and, and when Scorpio is in full power and that's why I like using Jean Grey and Jean Grey to Phoenix, right? Because if y'all remember, I think it was X-Men 10 or I can't remember, never remember the, 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 not the episode, but you know how all the different movies had names to it. So whatever one it was, it was when she had completely went into Phoenix and she was a full blaze and everything was being sucked in and being burned at the same time. Why? Because Scorpio, not only is it going to go after what it wants, it is also, it will br it burn everything down and start over. Okay. Yes. Yes. That one, that one right there, Monique. It is, it will burn it all down, okay? But I always like bringing this as a reference because there was only one thing that stopped Phoenix from burning everything to the ground, from her killing the entire world, and that was Wolverine, okay? Even Wolverine was being burnt. Like, you started to see his metal and all that kind of stuff because she was scorching him <laughs> as he was trying to claw his way to her to pour her down to ground her energy. Well, Wolverine is the Aries energy. The only thing that can stop that Scorpio from doing that especially when we talk about the Mars dynamic, is Aries, okay? Aries is the only energy that can smother that, that Scorpio enough for it to understand, like, hey, listen, I know, you know, war and fire is, you know, something that we can use, but we don't need to burn it all up, okay? So understand that the energy of Scorpio is going to go after what it needs. And your job is to understand that when we're talking about the Mars dynamic of it, it's going to go towards that. And the Jupiter energy is also going to show up. Now, even though it's a little bit of out of place, the Jupiter and Scorpio energy, meaning that Jupiter likes to be, you know, it likes fire in a sense, but it likes to be more in travel perspective. It likes to think about how we're going to get bigger. And Scorpio is like, okay, we can get bigger, but we might need to burn some stuff down to get bigger, okay? So having that energy in place is realizing that sometimes that Scorpio Mars can, you know, sometimes bump heads, with that Scorpio Jupiter, but as long as you are very clear on what the vision is going to be and where you need to go, then the Scorpio Mars is going to go along with it because it just wants to get what it's going to get, okay? So be clear in how you need to make that move. Be clear in how you need to go big. And if you are clear in how you need to go big, the Scorpio Mars is going to back that up, okay? Moon in the second house and Uranus in the third house. Okay, so Moon and Scorpio. So now Moon and Scorpio people are very intuitive, okay? And also you can shake a room. <laughs> and Scorpio, no matter where it, it exists, can shake a room. But ooh, that emotional Scorpio though, you don't even have to necessarily say anything, okay? You can just be in the room. But if you are not feeling the best or you're feeling something, even when you're not saying something, the entire room feels it. 
Okay. So the fact that that energy sits into your second house, meaning that your money got to be good because when your money is not good or you're not in the best place with your money, everybody feels it. Okay. Why? Because when your money is good, you take care of a lot of people. You do a lot. You know what I'm saying? Scorpio, no matter where it shows up, is also an extreme great support system. Okay. So with your finances, you support, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it reminds me a lot of how Pisces moon show up too. Like when we got money, we always spending it, you know, we always support, right? So that energy together means when your money is good and it's in the second house being used properly, you're able to do more. And that's what you like doing. You love to show up in that way but when it's not oh baby okay you're not the best person to necessarily have a lot of people around you because you're going to be irritated you you give off a lot of irritation energy when the emotions are not solid especially when it comes down to the scorpio energy okay and then the uranus in the third house dynamics so scorpio uranus so anytime we're talking about again uranus is coming out of the box so sometimes when we're talking about being fearful or that fearful space of dealing with that, sometimes that Uranus energy needs to make a take a risk or needs to think about the future, needs to, you know, get into certain spaces. And it can kind of cause some dynamics, especially in the third house. And we're talking about groups of, of, of intellect when it comes down to friends. And I know this to be true for you because we'll be talking about stuff like, you know, astrology or mental health. And you will let everybody in the room talk, right? Everybody talking about, oh, I do this, I do that, I do that, I do this. And then you'll wait till we get in the car. You'll be like, well, you know, I got degrees in that. Why do you so shit? Why do I do this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, what is going on? So being more, instead of just being the silent person in the room and listening to people and like saying, okay, they don't really know what the fuck they talk about. I know that they don't know what they're talking about. It's also being okay with showing your accolades, showing who you are and what you know, your knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Because you have a lot of it. You've also done a lot of stuff as it relates to improving the things that you know and improving your own mental health, improving your family's health. But sometimes when you're in the group of people and we're having these intellectual conversations, you're not acting as if you know this stuff. You're not sharing it, okay? So using those two dynamics together, the moon and the aspect of Uranus too, is understanding that you have to be able to understand that when you don't share, when you do not allow us to see who you are from a full perspective, you know what I'm saying? That energy is not giving rise to more, okay? Meaning like when you speak what you know, this is what opens the doors and opens opportunities for you to take more in. The money we just talked about is sometimes hiding behind the things that you're not saying that you know how to do, okay? Now I'm proud of you because you've been doing more stuff. You're doing sessions. You're doing astrology. You know, you, you're just really doing it. You know what I'm saying? Even though I know I feel like you've been forced to do it and it's been a long time coming, you know what I'm saying? Just know that I'm extremely proud of you as your friend of knowing that you're not hiding with those things. Instead of you saying, I don't want to do it, you're doing it. You know what I'm saying? But that's that energy is realizing that you got a lot of skills, baby. So you got to you gotta be okay with, with showing your skills. And no matter if, you know, people going to be like, you do a lot of stuff. You probably be like, hell yeah, I do. I put the work in too. That's that power I'm talking about of Scorpio power. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Am I, I'm sorry, I'm tripping. I thought Scorpio wasn't in any of my houses. I have Scorpio in the third house. Okay, well, what I just said to her is the same thing for you. Okay, meaning that you know a lot of things, but are you necessarily saying those things when you're in the groups, when you are having intellectual conversation with people? Are you letting them know your skills? Are you talking about the things that you know? Or are you hiding? Are you like sitting back in the cut, acting like you don't know nothing? You know what I'm saying? Understand that Scorpio is also a part of the Mars dynamic. Even though Pluto is its primary uh, like ruler, Mars is also part of the rulership too. So meaning that what you say that you know or what you're not afraid to activate power on is going to also provide the Mars movement to your change. So you got to look at Mars and Pluto together when we're talking about Scorpio, okay? Meaning even though it's, score, it's Pluto dynamic primarily, Mars is the assistant. So Mars will come in to help Scorpio as long as it's not afraid to say what needs to be said, okay? Y'all got me? Okay, right. thank you. You're yeah. welcome. 
All right, so that is going to be your May 5th lunar eclipse. The last part we're going to talk about before we go into, I'm going to give you guys, we're going to talk a little bit about the Mercury retrograde that's getting ready to come up. So I'm going to also segue into that, into this Taurus dynamic, and then I'm going to let y'all go. So for the back door to the May 5th lunar eclipse in Scorpio, October 28th is the lunar eclipse in Taurus. This is going to affect all of your fixed planets. Fixed planets are Taurus, Scorpio, and um Aquarius and Leo okay so meaning these are the energies that's going to primarily be hit so it's going to first hit Taurus and first hit Scorpio but it's also going to also give some light to those other placements so where is Taurus in your chart I don't have no Taurus in my chart no I just I just put it in my houses I make because because you know once you start to really work within this aspect of astrology, you realize that you can move some stuff around. So I put it in there. <laughs> I don't have no Taurus nowhere. I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh. We're going to put some Taurus in here. Only in the eighth house. Okay. See, Pearl, we got to put some, you're going to put some Taurus in your chart too. I'm going to stick some in there. Eighth house. Okay, Sherry. So eighth house, that's a good place. It's the back door to Scorpio. So meaning that that money and your change, your ability to change, and your 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 values, your stability, your the things that you're supposed to have is the back door to that eighth house energy. Okay, so meaning the more you change, the more it ushers that in. Okay, um, no, Pearl, I'm with you on it. Okay, um, let's see, let's see. Let's just say Tars in the second house and Tars in Chiron. Okay, then. So basically, you just want it all done for you. That's what you want. You just don't want to do it because you want somebody else to do it. Is that is that what we that's that what we figuring out here? You just want somebody else to do it. Well, you know what? You can do that. Get you some employees, but you're gonna have to do it first. You can have employees that make people do all the work for you, but you're gonna have to do it first. You can tell them what to do. Other than that, then I don't understand. I don't understand what you think is gonna happen. They're not gonna just show up. But I understand too, Tars and Chiron, meaning that this is that wounded healer stuff, right? Anytime we're talking about Chiron, we're talking about, oh, these are my wounds. So your wounds are also surrounding being the person who's always been in the room to get the information from all the gurus. You're the person that's going to always get all the information, but you're also wherever you got Tars. And I wish Comfort was in here because she's always my, my Tars example. Tars is where you don't want to use the stuff. You can get you sit there and stack all that information up. You in the room with all these high profile people. You getting all of their works. You know everything that they they've been doing, but yet and still you don't use none of it. It's like, wait a minute, I need to go to one more class. Wait a minute, I need to read one more book. I need to go do one more thing. No, you don't. You need to do none of that. You need to apply. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay. So understand that this is the application of you in that time period. So meaning that the eclipse on the 28th is going to ask you, where is the application? Where have you been applying the things that need to be applied? Okay. Now, of course, the Chiron going to come in and it's going to be, you know, cries, tears. Well, I, you know, I've been this, I've been that. Don't matter. You know, you're going to have to get it done. Okay. Same for you, uh, Kadesh, Chiron in the ninth house. So this, that, that movement thing, that Jupiter part, because, you know, ninth house is all Jupiter. So sometimes your ability to expand or your ability to need to expand, sometimes you just don't want to do it. <laughs> Taurus just don't Oh, my do goodness. <laughs> to the point to where you literally said it. I don't want to do that. And I'm like, you got to do it. What you mean you don't want to do it? Okay. So know that the ninth house, the expansion, when you apply, put all the knowledge, all the gurus, the same for you, Kadesh. You've worked with so many people and all the things that you worked with, the people you've worked with, all the, the skills and all the stuff that you've acquired, you got to apply it. You got to put it in. You got to do the classes. You know what I'm saying? And again, I'm proud of you because you are doing it. But we're talking about why this stuff is showing up, right? And why you've been doing it already. So you've already been feeling it. You need to talk to your friend Leslie over there and get her on board. Y'all need to be having some constant conversations about how to move this doggone Taurus and move this Chiron energy, okay? Because even though you don't want to do it, you have to do it. We are all tied together. What you don't do affects me and I need it. You know what I'm saying? Don't be so shortchanging me. 
Because if you're going to short change me, then fine. I'm going to stop doing classes. I'm going to stop talking to y'all. I'm going to just cut my social media off. And then we ain't doing this no more. And how you going to feel then? You're going to feel slighted. You're going to feel like I'm doing you a disservice. So come on, give me mine. Y'all all got something for me. And whatever you don't do affects us all. Okay. All right, Taju, Jupiter and Taurus, Taurus in the night house. I just got through talking about Taurus in the night house. Even though I talked about it from a Chiron perspective, it's the same thing. It's understanding that you have to use those skills. I'm a, When we have our session next month, make sure you bring all the stuff that you've been doing in the last five years, the education, all the knowledge that you've been acquiring. I already know about the Tantra because we talked about that. I know you just recently did the Tantra stuff. But I need to know. I need to go through all of them skills that you got going on so I can see what you haven't been applying, what you haven't been saying that you can actually do. Because you be acting like, you know, you be quiet as a mouse over there. Like you don't know what's going on. But I'm on to you, sir. I'm on to you. Just know that. Okay. Um, Jupiter and Taurus, what, when you do apply the Taurus energy, when you do move, understand, I understand Taurus is very fixed. It is a bull. So it is stubborn. Okay. So sometimes it don't want to make nothing. It don't want to do nothing. But when you do decide to apply yourself and make those moves, even though it may be slow to make the moves, understand when Taurus applies itself, it is the top. It is the all American. It is the CEO, okay? It is the person that's going to look like money, smell like money, best sex, best food, best house, best car. It is the best of all bestest, okay? <laughs> it gets the best of everything when it actually decides to get up and actually charge, okay? Use the bull reference. When it charged for life, it gets everything, okay? All right, Jay. So you said Tars in the sixth house. So sixth house is the house of health. Okay. So meaning that a lot of things that you're not doing is also going to equate to you feeling like you are in panic. Okay. And when I mean in panic, sometimes Taurus and Virgo can be seen as hypochondriacs. So what I mean is when you start to feel like something's going on in your body, you know, oh, oh, I feel like this is going on. I need to go get my, my arm checked. I think my arm is coming to loose and then you go to the doctor and they do all the tests and they be like i'm sorry we didn't find anything you be like what you mean i know what's up going on because that ain't nothing going on okay it's in your head and because it is in your head you got to understand that the reason why that is is because you have to do the things that six house needs you to do which is to not overindulge now we know taurus is like to eat okay so wherever Taurus is, again, it's good food, good sex, sometimes overindulging in these things, okay? So in the sixth house, you have to watch your overindulgence, James, okay? So I mean, and making sure that the energy and the whole vibration of what you're going to do and app applying yourself when you go against yourself and not making sure that you're watching what you eat, not making sure that you are working out, not making sure that you are, again, watching your mental process and not overthinking. It turns into anxiety and stress, okay? It turns into overthinking and overly doing things, okay? But again, it's not real. The hypochondriac part is not real. Just realize that the whole vibration of it is just asking you to be more structured and be more disciplined when it comes down to the sixth house, okay? Marcel, Tars in the fifth house and Tars in Chiron. So you got Tars in Chiron too. See, I sold you a Leslie. See, see what I be talking about? How y'all moving in this lifetime? Y'all are husband and wife. And I swear for God, y'all got a lot of placements that are directly the same. So y'all are crutches to each other. Okay, y'all are each other's problems. <laughs> <laughs> the Chiron, really? Y'all got it in the same spaces? You, you, you got to do it. You got to be willing to do it. Because whatever you do, Leslie... You motivate him. Marcel, whatever you do, you motivate her. Y'all are healing these spaces together, okay? Y'all can do it. And it's whatever you do heal, especially when it comes down to this Taurus vibration, Marcel is going to only give boost to the fifth house. It's going to put you more out there. It's going to put you more on the stage and draw more energy to the things that you need to do as far as people being able to see you. Again, both of y'all hiding. But I got y'all a card today. Because see, again, I'm grateful for the universe showing me some things that I didn't look at y'all chart multi multiple times. <laughs> I looked at it over backwards and forwards, but I ain't never saw this today, okay? So because I ain't never saw this today, just know 
that I'm going to be, I'm on y'all, okay, when it comes down to this part right here, because this is where y'all hiding the most, okay? Like I said, it's okay, because Kadesh is right there with y'all too. <laughs> Kadesh is right there, but the good thing is she's been forcing herself out. Y'all haven't forced yourself out. Okay, so we need to have a group meeting, just the four of us, me, you, Marcel, and Kadesh. We're going to talk about this right here because, again, I didn't look at all of y'all charts and never saw this, but I understand because it's eclipse energy we got from now until November to work on it, right? We don't have to wait until y'all go through some hardcore things, you know what I'm saying? Some hardcore value loss or something dealing with, you know, something that you really want to have. And then the universe is like, oh, you don't want to heal? Well, let me snatch this from you. We don't got to go through that. We can go ahead, have a plan of action to put the stuff out so y'all can get on with it, okay? So you don't have to feel like you got to fight with it. You understand? Do, do y'all hear me? The folk hello am i talking to myself yes ma'am i'm in okay got it perfect yes ma'am yes, Madam Dumbo. okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah just know i'm on to y'all okay all right candace let's see Taurus and Mars and in the sixth house. So what I was just telling, who was that, James, about that sixth house Taurus energy is just watching your food intake, right? Watching what's going on, watching how you tend to panic a little bit. Don't use food as a, a, a an escape goat, okay? Meaning that when you're not feeling the best, we're not running to food, okay? Because running to food is going to mess up your digestive system. The sixth house is the rule of digestive system. So if you go run to food or use it as a, as a way for you to escape or use it as a way for you to deal with the overthinking in your brain, sixth house is overthinking, overprocessing and anxiety, right? So we use the Taurus things of that. And then ain't just food. It's also retail therapy. Buying stuff that you don't need to buy. Okay, like this is all the ways in which you tend to heal that or tend to feel like it's helping you to deal with a lot of things that you got going on. But no, you have to really be mindful of how you use that Taurus energy. Again, we don't we want to watch it because we don't want to have to go through things where we have Taurus is our stability, our values, our, our, our money and all those things. So when we are ignoring the things that the universe is saying, it's like, oh, well, I need to take some stuff. So we don't want to lose the things that we have in order for us to understand that we got to be more you know more structured and a little bit more disciplined when it comes down to the sixth house perspective same with mars and uh tars now mars and tar tars and mars don't like each other okay there's not something that that's favorable but and it's only because tars is fixed okay it's very bull like and because it is you can't get it to move fast you got to get it to really understand first before it moves but if you allow yourself to really work the dynamic of the sixth house making sure that you are grounding yourself right so when things are going on instead of you running to vices to deal with it if you ground the energy then that tars will be more adapt to move okay but if you go away from you know really processing the way you need to process and overindulging in things then you're not gonna make a move you're just gonna keep you know feeling like i'm gonna just stay right here for a little bit longer no you gotta make some moves so process it out don't overthink don't have too much anxiety too much stress which we talked about in your session yesterday so that you can make the moves that need to be made that need to be made okay all right, Sherry, I forgot I have Taurus and Chiron. As well. well, you gonna join the Taurus and Chiron party. <laughs> you with us, Sherry, okay? So we gonna have this conversation because we gotta work on some things, okay? Understand it again, that Taurus and Chiron thing is that I don't wanna do it. I, I, I'm i hurt, I'm wounded. And because I'm wounded, I don't wanna do it, okay? So we are gonna work on that. And the fact it's in eighth house, eighth house is the, again, the back door, to that Scorpio energy. So it's the place where we can go and we can transform and change it. Okay. So when it comes, my child and just walked in the room. What you doing here? I'm sorry. Happy 420, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing here? Okay. okay yes. Anyway. Okay. So yes, yes, share. I want you to join us on that perspective as well. I'll call you when I'm done. All right, let's see. Okay, me too, girl, bye. Monique, who you say girl, bye to me? Okay. Lord, shake my head, Candace. Oh, hey, Samara. I didn't know you had stepped in the door. 
All right. So, so yeah, Cher, you're going to join us on that because again, understand that that Chiron energy is really important. This is a great energy for us to heal this, meaning like the eclipse that we're having this year. Oh, this is really good. This is really good for the Chiron Taurus energy. Okay. Meaning that using this last portal of opportunity of Taurus and Scorpio, meaning we're going to usher in the next year, a lot of stuff that we've been having stalls in as it relates to Taurus and as it relates to the Scorpio energy, we're healing that this year okay so that's what the that energy is about all right what yeah, I, need I just want to say one thing real quick because uh -huh. last year we were on this Taurus Scorpio um, yep. ride and yep. a lot of shit shifted for me mm -hmm. so just noticing where I'm at now where I was six months ago and the way it shifted the way my relationships are coming up and the way you're right I'm having to show what the fuck I do and yep. quit playing yes so yes. I, I really appreciate this and what I'm looking at is it sounds like it seems like Taurus and uh Chiron is um uh, like a generational thing it is it's along with that same Pluto and Libra so those okay. of us who have Pluto and Libra and I think it's somewhere in between 70 uh 76 1976 it's usually a 10-year span so 1976 mm -hmm. to like 86 87 um that's that libra thing so it's like centennial it's every 10 years that we're dealing with this pluto shift right and it also negates the generations right so that those of us that dealing with that generational thing we also have that chiron and taurus part and a lot of it does have to do with um us also the accolades that we want or the recognition that we've been wanting to i'm gonna just segue this in there i wasn't gonna talk about it but i'm gonna talk about it anyway um but the 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 praise that we've been really putting in because we've been putting a lot of work those of us that are also in that generation too of that car running tars is like we do a lot but sometimes it feels like we're not getting the the praise and the accolades that we've been wanting but then guess what Jupiter is moving into Taurus. And when it moves into Taurus, guess who gonna get a boost? Everybody that has doggone Chiron and Taurus or everybody who's dealing with that perspective of Taurus energy, we're all gonna get the recognition. So you have to get out of your own way of feeling like you don't wanna do it because if you don't, you're gonna miss the opportunity. We've been waiting to get that recognition for all the work that we put in, but we've also been afraid to say it or been afraid to really, again, put off their all the stuff that we've educated ourselves to know or the rooms that we've been in, in, inside of. Again, most of us have worked with some very high profile people. That's been part of our education, right? But at the same time, we've been wounded by these same relationships. So because we've been wounded by these same relationships, we, we, don't, we don't want to talk about it. We just want to heal in silence. You know what I'm saying? But no, we don't have to heal in silence. Uh, when does the, what part start? The Jupiter and Taurus? I mean, I'm talking to you, Pearl. You put when does it start? Jupiter and Taurus starts on May 16th. Okay, I'm Taurus in the 10th house, I believe. Oh, you better, you better do more than you believe. Go pull that chart up. I need you to tell me where your Taurus energy is. That's what we're talking about now. Yes, it starts on the 16th of, of, of May. So when that energy shifts, those of us that have that Taurus energy are dealing with it. That's when we're going to get a boost in that, okay? So if you have Taurus in the 10th house, that Taurus energy in the 10th house has everything to do with the um, being the same thing. So it's part of what we're talking about with this Chiron and Taurus, but, but let me segue for a minute because I also have Taurus in the 10th house, right? So I don't have no planets in Taurus, but that's where my energy of that Chiron Taurus energy is. When we have that 10th house dynamic of Taurus vibration, when Jupiter switches into Taurus, you're going to get the recognition. Not only do you get the recognition, you're going to get the bag, right? The money is coming. So all the money energy that you've been waiting on, or, you know, you're putting in the work and you want people to recognize the work that you've been doing, it's on the way. It's already, literally, it's already here, but it's also on the way. So meaning from now until uh, we have that very first portal of change on May 16th, when uh, Jupiter switches into Taurus dynamic, we're going to have the lunar eclipse is going to happen in Taurus on October 28th. So we got six months of real hardcore work 
for those tarnished placements that you have to get its recognition, to get the money, to get yourself out of the rut of not wanting to move and make the shifts and changes. Now it's the time for you to start working on that. Let's not wait. Let's. This is what I mean when I say living in alignment, right? Or or me having the whole brand. I am living aligned because what I realize about astrology is. People only want to use astrology when it's in, in a space when they want to like produce something really quick. I want this relationship. I want more money. No, understand that this energy is constantly moving. And if you can get ahead of it, you can already start to pull the vibrations early. You don't have to wait. You don't have to feel like, oh, I'm going to only wait until October and start working on the energy of Taurus. Or I'm going to wait until something is shown to me before I start working on this dynamic. No, work on it now. Work on all four of these placements now. What I mean is today's energy, solar eclipse and Aries. May 5th, lunar eclipse and Scorpio. All the Scorpio stuff we talked about, work on it now. October 14th, solar eclipse and Libra. Start working on Libra stuff now. October 28th, lunar eclipse and Taurus. Start working on it now. Like Kadesh has said, we've been dealing with Taurus and Scorpio for two years. This is the third year. Meaning every eclipse that we've had over the last two years has all been dealing with Taurus and Scorpio. So you've been forced and pushed and been asked several times, "You, this is what you want? This is what you say you are supposed to have? Well, if it's what you're supposed to have, where are your fears? Where have you not been able to stand up and really show your power because you're afraid of judgment? Are you afraid that people are going to say you're doing too much? So what? You are doing too much. You should be doing too much, okay? This is the period to do that. Why? Because after this year, we're leaving Taurus and Scorpio. We're only gonna be dealing with Aries and Libra. And when Aries and Libra comes in, it's just relationship straight. Like relationship, relationship, relationship. Right now, we're still relationship and we're still value system. We're still power. We're still change and transformation. So know that this is the time to change and transform so that as we move into this next cycle, the relationships that we need to have, all those things can actually op open this door, okay? All right. So y'all got me? I don't know what happened with the, the, the annotations on my thing. But all right, so real quickly, and we're going to end up, you're getting ready to go through a Mercury retrograde. <laughs> <laughs> now y'all like, God, dog, we're just going from one thing to the next. It's all good stuff. As, as long as y'all here with me, y'all know we're going to all make it great, okay? You're going through a Mercury retrograde starting tomorrow, okay? Meaning you already kind of in it right now. So y'all know we have a pre-phase, you have a constant phase of it, and then you have a post-phase, right? Right now, you're still in the pre-phase until tomorrow. This re Mercury retrograde is going to be from April 21st to May 15th. So that means it's going to carry you from the eclipse you're in now all the way through your eclipse on May 5th into the Jupiter switch from Aries into um, Taurus, okay? It's extremely important that you are watching your words. Why? Because this, this eclipse, that, I mean, uh, this Mercury retrograde that we're dealing with is in Taurus. So the reason why I ask you, that, you guys to tell me where your Taurus placements are, yes, ma'am, April 21st to May 15th. This is it right here, okay? The reason why I ask you to say where your Taurus is because the Mercury retrograde is going to affect your Taurus placements. So for all you Chiron and Taurus people, okay me being one of them all right this is gonna be the conversation okay <laughs> this is the conversation okay so know that again you're working on it now you're not waiting until october 28th to deal with tara stuff you're gonna deal with it right now and right now i mean communication what are the words that you're saying to yourself watch your words especially surrounding things where you feel like um you're supposed to have things already. This is also an energy that can also make you feel a little bit of jealousy, okay? Jealousy meaning that you're looking at other people who have done less work than you and you feel like they've gotten farther ahead than you. That's not the truth, okay? Everything that glitters ain't gold, okay? So don't be don't be um, distracted by the flashiness, okay? A lot of stuff on social media has been heavy, heavily edited, Okay, and I ain't talking about just editing the point to where, you know, they're they're buying followers, they're buying a whole lot of stuff. So don't 
Don't get confused at what you got going on. Stay focused on you. Yes, Kadesh, no comparisons, okay? If you want a comparison and you need somebody to compare to, guess what? Compare yourself to the person that you was last year. Compare yourself to the person you was yesterday. How about that? The only competition that you got is you, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you stay focused on the fact that the only competition that you got is you, you're going to be farther ahead in a short amount of time. But if you start to look at people around you thinking that they got more than you and they've done less than you, you're going to go backwards, just like that retrograde, okay? Now, if you want to go backwards, you want to trick yourself, <laughs> You want to trick yourself, then go ahead and do it. But I'm telling you right now that this, this uh, Mercury retrograde is setting you up for nothing but good stuff. All right. Watch your words. Watch what you say, how you talk to yourself, how you talk to the people around you. And also make sure that you are speaking in terms of I have, I have this, I have what I need. Everything has already worked out for me. You know what I'm saying? Everything that I need is in divine order and divine time. And I don't have to worry because the universe already got me. Okay. Don't come again. Don't compare yourself to nobody else. Only compare yourself to you. You got me. Y'all ready? That's it. We're going to end right there. Y'all got any questions before I let y'all go? I just had one more thing I wanted to add just because this Taurus and Mercury, I mean, I'm, I'm getting excited on purpose. But <laughs> this <laughs> slowing down my thoughts is what keeps coming up. That Taurus is move like fucking mud. So just slowing down the thoughts and slowing down my responses and slowing and being in, you know, balanced pleasure, like yummy, juicy, luxurious, but slowing down. I think that's what's really coming up for me right now. Okay, well, that's good. But you also got to be mindful that because like you just said, Tars already moved slow as hell. You got to be mindful not to slow down anymore. Okay, I meaning don't, okay. get, don't yeah. get so slow to where you just stop. Okay. <laughs> but yes, yeah, slowing down your energy and not feeling like, you know what I'm saying, that are you behind schedule. Now, I will mm -hmm. say that, you know what I'm saying? That's You're what not, I'm trying to say. Thank yeah. you. Yes, you're not behind schedule at all. You're right on time, but you don't want to get into the space where you feel like, oh, I could just take my time and move, you know, move at my own pace. No, you can't. Okay. We got work to do. Okay. And because we have work to do, again, it's about you getting on with the things that you know you've been needing to do anyway. A lot of the stuff that Tars is asking us to do and, and, we want to use the retrograde to fine tune, right? So like I said, understanding that you're, you're already on divine timing, right? But you also want to make sure that when we coming out of this retrograde, that you are set to go. So use this time period to, you know, get the fine tuning together, listen, okay? Because when we're in retrograde in Taurus, Taurus can talk. All right. Sometimes it talks too much. OK, so because sometimes it talks too much, you need to shut up during this time period. Hush, listen, fine tune so that when we come out of it on May 15th, then this energy is going to be what is it that you need to do right now? OK, and start to move on that. All right. So, yes, ma'am. Thank you for that. That that last little part. All right. Any questions? Thank you, Chichi. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Any question, any question? I got you, Samaya. So I, I, I wrote direct message to you. So yeah, I'm sending this out tonight for y'all to go back and um, review and study tonight. Um, I'll close and just saying to make sure that you are using this Aries energy. Allow it to again. Have fun, okay? Play, be playful. Don't be so serious all the time. Everything ain't all doggone serious. Some of it is just remembering that you are already intuitive, that you already got it. You are very psychic right now. And because you are very psychic, use it. And what I mean being in your psychic energy, the baby is all knowing. The baby ain't wanting for nothing, okay? The baby already knows that it has everything. So when you start to trip and thinking that the money ain't where you need it to be, 
The baby is being taken care of. The universe is going to make sure of it, okay? When you start to trip and thinking that things are not moving as fast as you think it's supposed to move, again, the baby is taken care of. You got everything that you need. Everything is in divine time. It is in divine order. And because it is, you can play knowing that. So whatever you need, give it to the universe and be like, hey, I need this. And then go play. Okay, go and have yourself a good time, have great conversations, enjoy yourself, be in good company, you know what I'm saying, have great conversations, and let all the heavy stuff go, this is not a heavy time period, don't let this eclipse trip you up into thinking that you need to panic, there is no panic here, it's only freedom and only fun, okay, I love y'all, as always, thank y'all for being here with me. We're going to have another class that's going to be coming up for the eclipse next month where we're going to re-go over some stuff and dealing with the energy on that May 5th vibration, as well as talking about some more Scorpio stuff, Scorpio and Taurus energy. So we're going to dig into that. And we're going to also talk about some of these other things that's going to take place over the summer. Okay. So for those of you that are my seasonal clients, we're already doing our sessions now. So you already know that what y'all need to work on for the next three months. But when we get into next month, we're going to be really hammering on a lot of summer stuff so meaning that this is the fine tune fine tune this during the spring season but when summer comes it's gonna be time for us to put everything into action okay so y'all don't have no questions i love y'all i'm gonna let y'all go enjoy the rest of your 420 put one in the air for me you know what i'm saying i love you guys thank you so much pearl i appreciate you for coming sliding in last minute you got in here <laughs> yes i did yes i did <laughs> Thank you for being here. And again, once you guys get y'all playback, Samaya, especially for you, when you go back and you watch the playback, if you got any questions, you already know how to hit me up. Uh, same with, with any of y'all. When y'all listen back to everything and you go through your, your notes or whatever, if you got any questions, hit me up. I love y'all. I'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you, Madam. I mean, thank you, Gigi. You better stop. <laughs> you was whipping us. Don't, don't, you, let, don't you let the desk get you. you in trouble. Don't you let. <laughs> you, gave, you, you gave us lashes today. Don't you let baby water get you in trouble. <laughs> you did not you give out hugs. You did not give out love. You gave out lashes. Don't That's you. for that Taurus ass. <laughs> There's all them Chiron. See them Yeah, she got all the Taurus in this last. The Chiron and Taurus people give you all this headache. That's what it be. They be giving you all this stress. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Thank you. Bye. Love y'all.